I challenged myself to design and 3D print a functional Telecaster style electric guitar and this is what I came up with. In this video, I'll walk you through the entire build process from start to finish and give a brief demo of how it sounds. If you've seen any of my past videos, you know that this isn't my first 3D printed guitar. In fact, it's the fourth one I've built and the third guitar I've designed from scratch. And with each new design, I've tried new techniques, finding both things that work well and areas for improvement. This design incorporates all of these learnings, and overall, I'm really happy with the final result. It's worth noting that as with my previous Les Paul-style guitar, I'll be making the files for this design available on my website, the3dprintzone.com, including the STLs to 3D print the body, as well as a parts list for the other components such as the neck and electronics. I'll also be providing unlimited access to all of my 3D printable guitar designs on my newly launched Patreon page, so if you're interested to take this project on, check out the links in the description below. And as always, if you enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing to support the channel, and if you have any questions or comments, please make sure to leave those in the comments section below. So without further ado, let's get started. In this video, I won't be covering the specific details on how I created the model in CAD, but leave a comment below if that's a video you'd be interested in. Essentially, I sketched the main guitar body shape, and then added features for the neck, cavities for the pickups and electronics, and features for the output jack and strap post. To print the body of the guitar, I split the model into five sections so it could be easily printed on a vast majority of home 3D printers. In my case, I'm printing on a Bamboo Lab A1, which has a build area of 256 by 256 millimeters. I used Bamboo Studio to slice the models and printed all of the main body parts using Bamboo Lab White PLA Basic. For the jack cover and pickup cover, I went with a silk purple color to match the epoxy. It's very important that the inner core piece that mounts the pickups and bridge is very strong in order to withstand the tension of the guitar strings and therefore I used the built-in strength profile for the core in an info percentage of 40. I also increased the number of perimeter wall loops to 6 to give it extra strength. Since the outer pieces do not see any significant load, I printed them using the standard profile with 25% infill and the default 2 perimeter wall loops. That being said, you can increase any of the infill percentages if you're looking for a stronger or heavier guitar body. All of the parts were printed with 0.2 millimeter layer heights and tree supports were used for the overhangs. The smaller jack cover and pickup cover were both printed with 100% infill. To make things easier for you, I've included the 3MF files in the download, which includes all the print settings automatically preloaded, although you can still adjust them if you want. For the purposes of making this video, I had the time lapse mode turned on, which generates a purge tower, but you could simply turn that off in the slicer if you don't want it. This table summarizes the print time and amount of filament used for each part. If you use the same settings, you can expect to use about 1.8 kilograms of filament, or just under two standard rolls, and have a total print time of around 35 hours. If you assume an average roll of filament costs around $20, then the entire guitar body will cost you approximately $36 to print. The guitar body is designed to go together using wooden dowel pins that are 10 millimeters in diameter and 50 millimeters long. That being said, you could also use 3D printed dowels if you prefer. The dowel pins are used to align the parts during assembly, and they also provide some stiffness to the body. On the Les Paul design, I used PVC cement and super glue to hold the parts together, and this worked well, so I used the same technique here. I used a paintbrush to coat the dowel rods and the plastic contact faces with cement, and then push the parts together. I then used wood clamps to tightly squeeze and hold the parts to get a strong bond. After gluing everything together, I waited 24 hours to let it fully set. The next step in the build is definitely my favorite. Similar to the Les Paul design, I decided to give the guitar a unique aesthetic by using resin for the top surface. Recently, I've been experimenting with 3D printed parts and resin and I really like the design possibilities it unlocks. For a 3D printed guitar body, it provides a cool look, added stiffness, and helps to achieve a better weight. I previously learned that resin can easily seep between the seams of the body, so I used a liquid super glue to seal the gaps between the parts. 
Prior to actually pouring the epoxy, you want to make sure that your work surface is as level as possible, as this is critical to ensure the resin is flat when it cures. I chose a two-part epoxy made by JV Weld, which is a great option because it's both clear and rock solid when it fully cures. I used the CAD model to calculate the volume of resin needed and determined that the guitar requires about 517,000 cubic millimeters of resin, which converts to a little more than 500 milliliters of epoxy. Therefore, I used about 270 milliliters of part A and 270 milliliters of part B to ensure that I have enough material with a little extra just in case. I used black diamond mica powder to give the resin a sparkly colorful look to it, choosing purple haze as the main color with a bit of silver pearl, deep blue sea, and pure pearl white to give it some additional texture and color dynamic. That being said, you can of course use any color mixture that you want here depending on the look you're going for. I chose to mix all the mica powder in the part A resin and made sure to mix the powder really well so that it was uniformly distributed. After adding part B, I thoroughly mixed it all together to ensure the epoxy would cure properly. I don't know about you, but personally I think pouring the resin into the body cavity is super satisfying. The resin step is an opportunity to add your own creativity and really change the overall aesthetic of the design. And for this guitar, I decided to give it a bit of a textured look by using a wooden stick to create a swirl pattern. There's really no right or wrong here, I was mainly just going for a semi-random look, and overall I'm really happy with how it turned out. For the neck of the guitar, I'm using a Fender Squire Telecaster neck that I took from an old guitar that I had laying around. It has a width of about 55 millimeters and a height of approximately 24 millimeters. The neck gets mounted to the body using a neck plate with four screws that go through clearance holes in the 3D print and screw directly into the wood. Now it's time to install the electronics, starting with a 24 gauge ground wire for the bridge. I fed the wire through the hole to the electronics compartment and taped it to the body using Gorilla Tape to hold it in place. The bridge will clamp down on it to provide a path to ground. I'm using pickups that I purchased on Amazon with some extension wires to make the connections easier. After feeding the wires through the hole, I fastened the bridge to the body with four screws. Next, I installed the neck pickup mounting plate to the pickup using the included springs and screws and then mounted the assembly to the guitar body. Since soldering is not my area of expertise, I decided to make my life easier and chose to use an obsidian wire solderless Telecaster electronics kit that has a pre-wired control plate. Essentially, all you have to do is push down tabs on a connector and insert the wires to make the connections. I'll provide a link below. The kit comes with the necessary hardware as well as an output jack that I mounted to the 3D printed mount. After feeding the wires through the body, I mounted the jack assembly to the body using four small screws. I'm using Ernie Ball regular slinky strings, but you can of course use any strings that you prefer. I'm not going to walk you through the entire process of stringing a guitar and setting it up, but there are plenty of tutorials online for those of you that have never done it before. For the guitar strap post, I'm using parts from Music Lily that I bought on Amazon. To fasten them to the guitar, I'm using M4 by 20 flathead machine screws and square nuts. After installing the small rubber washer, simply insert the square nuts into the slots in the body and fasten the strap post into position. The obsidian wire electronics module is then mounted to an electronics plate by feeding the potentiometer dials through and fastening them with nuts. And then the three-way switch mounts to the plate using two screws. You could then simply slide the knobs onto the posts and fasten them using the set screws. I also 3D printed a small knob for the three-way switch that uses a press fit to stay in place. Lastly, it's time to make the wire connections. This step is fairly straightforward. You simply just follow the included wire diagram which shows which wire goes where. The instructions recommend 6 millimeters of exposed wire for a proper connection, and then you simply press down the tab, insert the wire, and release. Now we just mount the electronics assembly to the body using two screws, and the build is officially complete. Here's a shot of the completed guitar, and I have to say I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Also, for those of you wondering, the final weight of the guitar is about 7.5 pounds, which is pretty typical for an electric guitar. To me, the guitar weight is well distributed and it feels well balanced in my hands. 
Now it's finally time to plug this thing in and see how it plays. I'm certainly not the best person to demonstrate the guitar's sound quality, but here's a quick demo anyways. Hopefully this video was interesting to you. I would encourage anyone who's looking for a fun project to consider building one yourself and adding your own flair to it. I'm already working on several other 3D printed guitars, so stay tuned for more videos and upcoming designs. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.